Okay, YouTube. Uh, I guess I was asked uh, on the Modern uh, Blues Harmonica forum to make a little video about making your own harmonica mics. So this is my sort of um, attempt to do that with what I got going on right now. Uh, so let me just turn the camera around and show you what I have laid out on the table. Okay, these three right here, these are complete mics. These are ones that I made myself. Uh, and these are ones that I actually use, you know, interchangeably to play. I've made more than these three. These are the three that I was actually happy with, so I've kind of kept them. Uh, later on, I'll go more in depth into each of them, but as you can see, they're a little bit different. This one was made in an uh, old flashlight. This one is in a sort of metal spice canister that I've doctored up. And this one is the uh, clone of a bottle of blues. It's, it's in a McCormick spice canister, a little plastic spice canister. You can see it's plastic, clear plastic. The wiring is inside. And pop it off. You can see the grill. Kind of cool. So, I thought I'd start first by talking about the guts of mics. Then I'll go out to my uh, shed, my sort of workshop outside with my tools and I'll show you how to do some body work, the drilling of the chassis and that kind of stuff. Then I'll come back in here and uh, break out the soldering iron and actually show you how to assemble a mark for, mic from the various pieces parts. Okay, so the first, the first and foremost, uh, the most important thing in a mic microphone is the element. What you see here are various kinds of <clears throat> microphone elements that I've collected. Uh, you know, from various places. Uh, starting on the very left, so this one right here, this is a dynamic element. This is out of a vocal mic, just a cheap $10 vocal mic. I've actually used this in a microphone. I, I, I wasn't super pleased with it for a harmonica, but um, so I took it out, but I kept it around. You know, I might find another <laughs> application for it. This next one here is another uh, uh, dynamic element. This, that's what this one is too, dynamic element. And this particular element I got a uh, really cheap two-for-one deal from a surplus online electronic surplus dealer. And it's the element that's in uh, this particular microphone over here. That element sounds pretty good in certain applications. In other applications, it's a little bit weak. It's a low Z element, meaning it has a low output impedance. It has high current, low voltage, which means the signal is a little bit small for a guitar amp or something like that. But it works really well when you when you have a PA amp or something like that. You can go directly into it. Um, so the next one over is another dynamic element. This is actually a, a small speaker slash mic pickup. You can get it. It's from Radio Shack. You can probably uh, maybe not read on the back there. It's Radio Shack. I tested this out. It's not super good, obviously. Uh, I thought it'd be maybe make a nice lo-fi sound or something like that, but it's uh, it's kind of crappy. You can see the coil in there. It's got a plastic diaphragm. So, so the way these dynamic elements, they all work the same. They have a coil inside with a magnet attached to a diaphragm. In this case, it's plastic. And these ones, they're kind of packaged up really nicely, so you can't see them. They have a higher quality um, uh, so diaphragm and coil and magnet, etc. And so what happens is when you when sound vibrations hit the uh, diaphragm, it vibrates. It vibrates the magnet inside the coil, which induces a charge that goes down the wires and gets amplified. And that's basically this how the signal works. These other couple ones here are in a different family. These are uh, what we would call piezo elements. This particular one is more familiar to harmonicas or harmonica players. This is a, this is a, what you'd call a typical ceramic element. It's what's in your blues blasters and whatnot. Uh, so so this thing right here is essentially these microphones work. There's a layer of uh, crystals inside put down on a thin sheet of metal, and essentially the crystals when they get bent or squashed produce an electric signal. So you essentially have an ar another diaphragm with an armature that sort of bends the layer of crystal against a fulcrum inside there. And uh, as it, you know, bends, it produces the, the electrical signal, which is output, you know, via the two little prongs in the back to the wires and eventually to the, uh, to the amplifier. Uh, a crystal element is 
is in the same family, except it's a little bit more uh, fragile than these ceramic ones. It uses a uh, sort of uh, crist an active crystal that's sort of m m easier to break than these ceramic ones. These ones, the crystals are impregnated in this layer of ceramics. These other two things over here, which you, which you would find if you look for a piezoelectric transducer. Now, these things are usually used in, I don't know, doorbell buzzers and whatnot. They're actually the exact same thing, except they're spread out on a thin, you can see how thin that is, sheet of metal. So the, the contact side of it is just a flat piece of metal. And the back part here is the, uh, this is the crystal sort of spread out here. And these are rough and tumble. You can do pretty much what you want with them. I, mean, I wouldn't bend it. It'd probably break it, but you can drop it on the ground and stuff. Now these things are used by a lot of people for contact mics. So essentially what you do is put it on a surface like that. And, um, any vibrations on the surface will be picked up by those crystals and transmitted. Now I've got certain applications of these things I, I maybe you've seen in my little um, sort of cigar box um, uh, what is it called? Spring reverb box. Uh, I used one of these as a pickup inside there and it works pretty well in those applications and uh, maybe if I get around to it I have a kind of experimental application just if it turns out well I'll include it in this video. Uh, and that's for use in a microphone. Now this last thing right here is what you call an electric condenser, electret condenser microphone. These are found in everything, cell phones, whatnot. Uh, the really fancy kind of condenser mics work on the same principle. Essentially, they're like a big capacitor. There's a sort of dielectric field set up between two metal membranes. And as one vibrates, it gets closer to the other, changing the capacitance of the system. And so if you apply a voltage across the capacitor, it'll sort of fluctuate in frequency based on the vibrations. Uh, of those two sort of charged panels. Now these little ones, they're kind of nice. They don't need phantom power or anything like that because one of the um, uh, electrical membranes inside there is, has a sort of static electrical charge so it's always uh, charged and the, you know the voltage levels are smaller than in a condenser mic but it'll still work. So you have to be careful. Some of these things will work without phantom power and some of them won't and it'll be a little difficult to tell just by looking at it because they can look pretty much exactly the same so you have to read the data sheet now the other stuff here haha these are the the other bits of bits and pieces this obviously is a jack quarter inch jack uh, standard guitar cable input you could use uh, you know other kinds of jacks uh, the sort of microphone jacks with multiple prongs those are slightly more complicated to wire up but uh, if you want they of course they would work this, of course, here is a potentiometer. Potentiometer is a resistor that varies depending on how you twist it like that. And these three prongs right here set up a sort of resistive divider. And the sort of you're moving one contact closer to the other, changing the resistance between one and the other. And this is what we use for a volume control. Uh, I've got another jack over here. This is an inline jack. You can see it's kind of meant to go on the end of a cable. This is useful for uh, certain applications like building these microphones where a standard jack will not fit. And finally, of course, you've got knobs. Okay, so chassis. I'll show you outside some drilling, but uh, here I've got a couple of them. This is a particular one that I've used as an experimental chassis from time to time. It's very similar to the other mic you saw. You can see the volume control potentiometer, the jack is there, and you can see inside, essentially it's just got a couple wires coming out. That's where I attach various elements. Uh, I've got the sort of cover for it. This one's not quite as nice with, you know, that nice mesh and stuff, but this is just for experimental purposes anyway. So I use that to sort of test out elements as I come across them. Here's another flashlight I'm going to set up. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm coming off a cold here. Uh, and I'm going to try and probably use one of these electric, el electric elements in it. And this is a chassis I'll be drilling for you later when I get out to the shop. Okay, I'm running out of time for the first segment, so I'll come back at you with a second segment.